Hey, everybody, he's Tony George. I'm Scott Spritzer. We are DocSports.com. It is the NFC Championship clash between the Packers and the Niners in San Francisco. And the Niners right now laying about seven and a half, the total sitting right around 45. You know, it wasn't that long ago when these two teams hooked up during the regular season. San Francisco at the same venue was only a three-point favorite. If you remember in that game, they crushed Green Bay. They beat them 37 to 8. And Aaron Rodgers got sacked five times. He was under constant pressure, Tony. So first things first for Green Bay, you've got to be able to run the football because Green Bay is a play-action type offense these days under the new coaching staff. And that means you've got to be able to protect Aaron Rodgers when he drops back to throw in that play-action. They didn't do it the first time they met. Maybe they got a little idea of what to do second time around. Yeah, you know, and if you take a look at the Minnesota Vikings game last week, folks, 27-10, 27 to 10, total domination. Mm-hmm. That game, Scott, looked eerily familiar to me as the Sunday night game was when they played the Packers sure. and, and uh, mm-hmm. got Rodgers on the ground mm-hmm. with that pass rush. And I'll tell you what, right now, the biggest concern if you're a Green Bay backer in this game is that offensive line uh, last week had trouble with Seattle. This defensive line of San Francisco is much better mm-hmm. than that. And, of course, this total dropped down here from 48 in the first game to 45 and shot up four points on the sure. side, as you mentioned, Scott. Cousins sacked six times last week. This defense is full of confidence. So you have that mismatch on the offensive and defensive line, which usually spells doom. Mm-hmm. But then you have the best quarterback, maybe one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, <laughs> catching seven points in an NFC championship game, and he's been to a couple of these, and you've got more or less a greenhorn in mm-hmm. there with Garoppolo, Scott. That's an interesting dichotomy right. between these two teams at quarterback. Absolutely. You know, it's funny, last Friday, I'm sitting in the studio at Visa, and I'm doing the show, and we're talking about Green Bay versus Seattle, and uh, Brett Musburg is in the room. Patrick Maher, we're all in the dais, name dropper. Mm-hmm. And anyway, so we're sitting there talking about Green Bay, Seattle. And I said, and I'm getting to my point here, and I said that, you know, in this game between the Packers and the Seahawks, you've got Russell Wilson, who's going to have to play MVP-type football for his team to win. If one of these two quarterbacks doesn't have to have a huge game for their team to win, it would be Aaron Rodgers. Because right. you've got other guys who can take care of the offense as far as distributing the offensive I guess responsibility you could call it where it was all on Russell Wilson's shoulders and you can't you don't have to really say that in this particular game this is a game where Jimmy G if he gets the running game going around him if he gets the passing game going with his tight end then all of a sudden you got a situation where he can game manage a la Ryan Tannehill that's all they want out of Jimmy G game manage because everything else is clicking and moving like clockwork on that offensive side of the football if Green Bay can't handle the lead blocker uh, the fullback right. for San Francisco, they're in trouble in this game. Yeah. It's as simple as that because San Francisco will be able to control the football, control the tempo of this game, and Jimmy Garoppolo can do what he does. He doesn't have to make big plays when all the parts are moving in the right direction. I don't think that Aaron Rodgers needs to have a huge game this one, but he has to play without making turnovers. And you know what? It might get to the point where Aaron Rodgers has to be like he was before this new regime came in and changed the offense. It might be time for Aaron Rodgers a few times to pull the ball down and run with it after the way they got to him in that game, in the first game they met back in the regular season. Yeah, the middle of the field uh, last week was wide open for Mm -hmm. Russell Wilson. Uh, And I'll I'll tell you something, um, Rodgers um, needs to take a little bit out of that playbook. Sure. You know, if they're not there, take off and run it. And I'll tell you what, they also, on the other side of the field, as I mentioned, it was open on both sides in that game. Mm -hmm. If if Green Bay leaves the middle of the field open in this game, they are going to get shredded with that tight end that San Francisco has here. This is going to be a heck of a game, folks. Um, It's really a tough call here. I will tell you this. I am going to use the Niners in a teaser. I'm going to get them down here. Uh, The problem is here. What was the first game here? I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. Uh, like 38 to 7, 37, 37 to 8. 37 yeah. to 8. I still think San Francisco could put up 30 something in this game. I'm wondering what Green Bay can do and if they can get Jones going and Rodgers can have one of those phenomenal days. Some of the key to that is exactly what Mr. Spritzer told you. Aaron Rodgers is going to have to get some third and sixes with his feet. If that happens, this is going to be a heck of a game. If it doesn't, it's not going to be. And you're teasing the right way because you want to tease through seven and three. You don't want to tease from seven and a half up to 13 and a half or 14. That makes no sense. Mm -hmm. So at least you're out in front of that. doesn't mean you're an automatic winner, but you're teasing the right way. And as math model players will tell you that you want to tease down not only through seven and three, but you want to tease down to less than two. Or if you're teasing the other way, you want it to be a pick 
you know, you want to yeah. tease the team that's, uh, that's going to get more than seven and tease them up through three and seven. So ones, one and a half, pick them, teasing back and forth off of that as a favorite, teasing down from, you know, seven, seven and a half down to a pick or up to one and a half. That's the way the math model folks will tell you you should bet. And it works more often than not. That gives you your best chance to win two-point teasers. So you're teasing the right way uh, through that seven and three. He's Tony George. I'm Scott Spritzer. If you've yet to become a member at DocSports.com, click on the link below this video. Get yourself set up for that free $60 account. You can use it on his daily picks, my daily picks, anybody on the roster over at DocSports.com. Let's have a great weekend. Let's put them in the win column. We'll talk to you next week.